Welcome, everybody, to the 3 POA podcast special event coming to you a little bit earlier this time. And uh, what? We're going to go two weeks in a row today and next Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Which I didn't give this episode a number because, you know, it's a special episode. Yeah. And we, re- we return to our regularly scheduled programming next week. But right. since it's a special episode, I wanted to invite a very special guest. Mr. Dante. I thought you were talking about Alex. My bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, man. Oh, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, it's always fun. Yeah. This time for a full episode. Um, <laughs> guys, guys, what did I say just before we went live? <laughs> I, I see someone was going to say it. <laughs> I knew someone would say it. No, this, uh, this, this time frame is um, really unsuitable for Bobby. This is when he's... Um, spending time with, with with the kids and stuff like that. But um, you can't really have a three POA podcast with two people because you need three points of articulation. So, uh, yeah, we brought in our very good friend, uh, Dante, a.k.a. Dark Jokers in from the Infinity Equation. Um, a link to the... I'm sure all you guys know who the Infinity Equation are, but if you don't, check out the channel. A link to the channel is in the description below. Dante, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm good, you know. It's just uh, another day enjoying my figures, and that's about it. Enjoying life. Have you got anything so, new lately? I did my. I got my scrolls and my uh, hydro, uh, my shield soldiers, and so I've been messing with them. <laughs> nice. You mentioned nice. before the show that there were some issues with those when they came in. There were, and I'm just I'm a little sad about it. I'm trying to figure out which one it was again because they all look the same. I think it was was it this one. Uh, I think it was this one here. <laughs> Kieran, Kieran Ball says, says, finally, we get an expert on the show. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like this one here. So, like, if I turn his, I think it's this calf. Mm-hmm. It, like, if I turn it straight, it's like off. And I don't know why. Like, I don't know if it's the wrong piece on there or what's going on. That looks yeah. like two right calves to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Two left calves. And one I'm of those. Little, I'm a little upset about that. There was a little bit of paint issues on my shield, shield, uh, shield soldiers. Some so, stuck yeah. joints. You had to heat them up. Yeah, I did have to heat up the uh, shield. Uh, their feet. Their their feet were definitely stuck. So I did have to heat them up. So yeah. th- don't let anybody ever say that. Uh, so, now any any figure I you get, you may have to heat up somewhere along the line. Yeah. Yeah, so, I was talking to you guys about the Doctor Doom figure just before the show. I had to heat the crap out of him to get his um mm-hmm. his ankles to move. I was worried I was going to snap them. I had to heat them right up. Yeah, it, it's pretty common, you know, when you have plastic joints. I yeah. mean, I, I I think every line I collect I've had to heat up at some point. Um, but yeah, so we're coming to you with a special episode today. I know a few months ago um, we did one where I received a box from you, Tony, and mm-hmm. inside was the Coleco Rambo Defender vehicle, which was awesome, along with Rambo. Um, that's up in my Action Force display behind me. I absolutely love that thing. Um, and a while back, me and Dante used 
super chat money from Infinity Equation to uh, pick up something for you. And so both packages have arrived because I sent you one. I uh, yep. put together a few things that maybe are hard for you to obtain in, in Australia and some things I thought you might just like. And so we're going to do a bit of an unboxing today. But first, I'm sure everyone has noticed that massive vehicle on Tony's <laughs> table there. Yeah, yeah, everyone is... Um... Everyone in the chat's been talking about, but I, I posted a um, photo of this on <clears throat> Patreon and I think on Instagram. Um, and yeah, a lot of people are asking me what it is, where can they get it, can they get it in the States? Um, whoa, wow, super we chat got a, from Jim Largo. We got a super chat from Jim Largo. Ooh. Um, I don't know what that currency is, but thank you very much. That's a large number. <laughs> I think Jim that's says, like Guatemala. Yeah, Guatemala, Guatemalan peso, or I don't know. Yep. He said, uh, Jim, thank you. He says, it's all fun and games until you upset the habitual line stepper. Nice to see y'all. <laughs> now, Dante, last night we did the infinity equation, and I didn't yes. notice it. My wife was re watching the show this morning. <laughs> and she's like, he got a habitual line stepper t shirt. And I'm like, what? Yes. And I looked, I'm like, I totally did not notice that. <laughs> That, that's all thanks to uh, Colossal Customs. He, he sent me a link to this shirt. He's like, hey, this is going to be a great shirt for you. I was like, you know what? You're right. It's perfect. I was like, I, I ordered it. And I sent it to Just Jay as well. <laughs> I was like, hey, we both need these shirts. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you very much, Jim. That's yeah, a nice shirt um, you got on tonight, Dante. Is that a Moon Knight shirt? Yes, thank you. Yeah. I had to represent for my boy, Moon Knight. Love me some Moon Knight. That trailer Moon actually Moon looked pretty good. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. I'm excited for that. Um, I am wearing the best T-shirt, just so you guys know. That is true. <laughs> I still don't have a free POA T-shirt. <laughs> hey, like I said, I'm putting together a second box for you right now. I told you that before the show. But there okay. was a few things I forgot to put in the box you have now. And um, I am going to grab another three POA T-shirt, size um, extra small. Because yeah. you've been working out and you want to show yeah, off the yeah. pecs and the, the abs. Yeah, nice I haven't been snug. extra small since I was nine, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So that giant vehicle. Yes, this giant vehicle. Tell us vehicle. a little bit about it. All right. I'm going to um, share, a, share a photo here. Okay. So... This is a Jackal armored fighting vehicle, which is a, a vehicle that the British military used extensively in Afghanistan. It's quite a large vehicle, and I don't know the company that, that makes these toys, um, but this is a UK-based toy line called HM Armed Forces, where they literally brought out a toy line of modern military stuff based on the conflict in Iraq and Afghanistan. So your British army, you had Apache attack helicopters and all, all that kind of thing. These are kind of like action man figures where, you know, you can dress them and undress them with, with clothing. Um, but they're a little bit smaller than action man, but way bigger than Valiverse action force. They're 10 inches. But although they're 10 inches, the vehicles, while very accurate and very well made, are incredibly under scale. So if you see this guy sitting in here, in reality, a British soldier sitting in the driver's seat of a jackal, his helmet would not be above that kind of roll bar. Yeah, I was so just thinking as that. I see this and it's like, man, they sh really shrunk these things down. And I heard some people talking that you could, um, these are ideally suited to, to Valiverse Action Force. And I was like, well, I've got to pick one up and, and, and have a go. So I'm going to, how do I do this now? I need to put myself up here. There we go. Um, I picked this up off, off eBay. Um, I overpaid for mine simply because the first time I looked, there was one in Perth and it takes like two days to get something shipped from Perth. And I didn't want to wait three weeks for something to come from England. So um, I didn't pay it overpay too much. But this turned up. It's really awesome. But basically, when you when you put the figures in, in the front seats, they, they sit way too low and too far back. 
And also, if you put a, a guy in the back, he, he sits down too far. So I literally went out and bought a cheap, like, camping bedroll. You probably want one that's about 10 or 12 mil thick. I couldn't find one that wasn't, like, bright red or bright blue. Um, I found this one, which is kind of like grey or army green. It's only about 6 mil thick, so I've had to use double layers. And I'm basically, I just, with a pair of scissors, cut out the base of the seat and the back of the seat separately double-sided tape stuck them together and now it makes the figures sit up a little bit more sit forward a little bit more and i think you'll agree they look pretty damn good in there yes they yeah. do that is they awesome do. and then for for the figure in the back again i just used some of the foam i used three layers cut it out in a square sat them down inside so the figure in the back um sits a little bit a little bit higher um this vehicle has a trunk, so you can stick all your Valiverse wow. backpacks and stuff in there. Oh wow! Wow! Um, like it's it's got the British British flag on the back, the British flag on the front. Um, there's no kind of unit designation, so it doesn't have to be the parachute regiment or whatever. It can just be anything from the from the British Army. Now, the the weapons they come with. Um, where am I going? So you can see them properly. So there should be a 50 caliber on, on the back here and um, a GPMG or what you Americans call a mag 58 goes on the front. So for the 50 caliber, which is obviously oversized, I took a 50 caliber from the Rambo Coleco toy line. Mm. And all I had to do in the hole where it plugs in, because it was obviously way too big for the Rambo one, I just snuck a, stuck a small connecting piece of Lego inside that reduced the diameter of the hole and then the 50 caliber went in there. Um, perfect. So that's the perfect size. It's ideal. Um, for the front, I kind of, I modified the swivel there so I could mount a Minimi or a saw, you call it, from mm -hmm. the Balavert line. Um, this, this vehicle really should have a Mag 58 and I have been begging Bobby for months and months and months to make this gun um, just to annoy me. He probably won't. Um, <laughs> but then I realized, Hey, they did, they did this weapon also in the Rambo line. Um, and I just realized that this morning. So I've been on eBay looking for um, a mag 58 that I can mount to the, to the front of this vehicle. So the weapon systems are correct. You've got the 50 caliber and, and the mag 58, but these are, Readily available on eBay in the UK. They're not overly expensive. Um, even well, they with... will be now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, George Aitken was mentioning before. Um, yeah, here you go. They're fairly cheap in the UK. George, do you know if they're still being sold? Because I don't even know if this toy is from a few years ago. or I know HM Forces has been around for a little while. Um, but yeah, they also do... Um, they do a, a kind of um, a light tank. Um, the tank works really well with these guys because when you put the figures in the turret, um, you just kind of have their elbows out and it holds them up at the right level. They, you don't even need to worry about them sinking down in size. They do an Apache gunship. Um, I think there's a fighter jet as well. So some really exciting options for your Valiverse Action Force figures. Now, I just have a quick question. So the seats that are in there now, are they like, yep. uh, can you remove those? Before you put the padding on there, were there like seats that were part of the plastic molding or are there seats that you're they're, they're kind of part of They're part of the plastic molding. Okay. Um, so you can kind of, you can see the headrest there. I didn't bother putting anything on the headrest. Okay. Um, let's, um, let's get a guy out and I'll show you. Because I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I just want to show was. Go ahead. I was, just, I was curious because I was wondering, like, if I 3D printed seats for it, would you be able to put them in there? If you can take the old yeah, seats I think out. So. Okay. So there goes Condor's okay. rifle. So That's I just got really clean, man. You did good yeah, on that. That is. And man, it was a it was a two minute job. I just kind of measured the width of the bottom of the seat and. Um, I realized that I needed two layers. As I said, I wanted to get a, a thicker one of these, but mm. double-sided tape, it sticks to foam so easily. So 
you, you cut out the two bottom pieces, stick them together, stick them onto the seat. Then you do, um, then you do the back. Very, very simple. And, and again, I've put, um, you can see in here, I put three layers in here and that gets right. a Valiverse figure on a figure stand to sit just right. Yeah, when I looked those up on eBay, um, they were under a hundred, but then shipping to the U.S. was like another sixty to eighty dollars. So, still, at you know, if that's a hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty, I think that's that's a really good price. You, you know, should to, be able to, to get them for for less than a hundred bucks, man. Yeah, yeah. What well, uh, I think the ones I saw were like eighty, ninety. But I'm I'm expecting yeah. after this they're going to go up a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Bobby well, Collins says did... uh, one of them is 150 shipped to the U.S. Okay. Wow. Uh, we do have a couple Ooh. super chats. Um, yeah, go we should it. get to. Andrew Sabina, thank you very much. He says, just googled pics of a real life jackal AV. That thing is a beast. Tony really did it justice there. Totally. Yeah. Um. We got one from Matt Cropsey. Thank you very much. He says, hey, Tony, what do you think of this week's Pam and Tommy episode? <laughs> um, I did watch it, and now I can't, I can't remember. I can't remember what happened in the episode. But I've, I've, been, I've been loving that show. I think we're about five episodes in now, and it all kind of blurs into one. Um, it's a great show. Um, not something you want to watch with the kids. There's lots of yeah. <laughs> exposed skin uh, in the show, but it's it's really really funny. Uh, thank you, Matt. And then um, that was all for super chats. But Kieran Ball said that they stopped making those ten inch figures and they moved into micro figures and vehicles like Lego. Okay, so that that probably is a few years old at this point. Then, yeah. Yeah, what well, I can remember, I think this line started around more than 10 years ago. I actually mm -hmm. think I was still kind of spending some time in the UK, which I haven't done in, in a long time um, when these figures were coming out. Uh, also, if you go onto YouTube um, and search HM Forces toy commercial, there's some really cool, like they're kind of like old school toy commercials where you see all the different vehicles and, and figures moving around so that, that'll give you a real quick idea of what the uh what the range kind of looks like and what's involved with, with it um lots of options for your six inch figures I would you think, imagine... Dan, are you, you interested i i think i might have to get one because i i'm really kind of after seeing you what you're saying like customizing it i'm wondering like if i if you were able like to cut the seats out and then you, and like let's say i 3d printed like seats for it and you can just stick them in there to replace them and then even the inside where you put the foam at uh for the gunner's uh seat. Yep. Just like making just a a just a round circle block that can you can just kind of glue in there and that can always you just have stuck in there and then now you yep. have that that height for it. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of yeah. I might have to go grab one and see. Well, you I don't know what? I don't think you'd be able to cut the seats out. They're kind of molded into the chassis and of the vehicle, yeah. but I think if you made a 3D printed seat that was to the right scale. You could just literally glue it on top, um, right. and it would it would look it would look awesome. So, um, I, I try to come up with the simplest idea possible, which is just a bit of foam <laughs> and some tape. The only ones I see available now on eBay are under fifty. Actually, they're they're oh, fifty wow. with about forty to fifty dollars in shipping. So, I guess you can get under a hundred. I think I was looking at their um, their Apache helicopter, which sits at about. 100 on ebay now see that's yeah. not 40 shipping yeah. yeah but i wonder if that that um the h&m armed forces apache attack helicopter would work with action force because they have 10 inch figures next to it and they look massive the figures mm -hmm. they look massive yeah, yeah. All, the helicopter all of the vehicles are undersized so you, you would do something similar with the apache like i've done you all you need to do is kind of raise up the set like the steering wheel does not look out of proportion to the figures, to the to the uh, to Valiverse Action Force figures. Um, yes, even, he looked <laughs> yeah. I mean, even the ATV. Uh, I mean, that's going to be too big for Action Force, but I mean, this dude looks way too big on that ATV. Oh yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, so, look at the size of that guy next to the Apache helicopter. Like the mm-hmm. the vehicles were, were so <laughs> so under scale. Um, it's yeah. an ideal option for the Valiverse Action Force. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, so there was there's there's two of the jackals on there, and I'm just wondering. How long they're gonna last? If if they'll last through this show, I don't know. We have uh, eighty people watching. So, <laughs> do you do you want to buy one, Ryan? Just go ahead and buy it now. Me and Dante can keep the show going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do I? I don't know. Still, I mean, it's under a hundred, but still. It is. Um, you see, now you got me looking at it. See, I'm fooling with you. See. Are you, you're buying it, aren't you? You're buying it right now. No, I'm, I'm looking at the helicopter. I actually want the helicopter now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See what you did, Tony? Uh, Tony, the ultimate enabler. Oh, sure. my goodness. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to message all of these eBay sellers and tell them they owe me a commission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in, in, in my kind of big um, Valiverse Action Force review of Series 1, um, a lot of people were asking me questions about the Humvee that I had in that. That is a very, very expensive radio-controlled Humvee out of China. I think it it was like over 900 Australian dollars, which is like six, 700 US. Um, this, I will say, while not as accurate, this actually suits the figures better because this is a genuine toy. It doesn't look like a scale model. Um and the, the thing with that Humvee, if it looks better, you can take the roof off, so you've got kind of access to the inside, but then when you've got the roof off, you've just got four seats. There's no kind of gunner's turret. This is a much more kind of exciting, dynamic vehicle, I think, for your figures, because you put, as you saw, you put three figures in here, and you can clearly see all the figures. They're not hidden inside um, a cockpit with just one guy in, in the turret. Um, I, I love this thing. I wouldn't be surprised if I end up going and buying another one because this is Desert Rat's ride. Like Desert Rat belongs in this vehicle. So it looks good, man. Yeah, it, that, that's a great job. That's and that's what's wonderful. I'll I would love to help customize it if, if it's possible. Yeah. You, you'll also see the price of um, Rambo 50 caliber machine guns go up. <laughs> what well, a machine gun does no problem. Notice, um, you can always find 50 calibers have like a double handle grip on the back with a button that mm. you press down as the trigger. The handle is actually missing off this one. Um, I, I, I don't have it, so I went on eBay yesterday and I. You can pick up a boxed Rambo 50 caliber machine gun, which is basically the gun, the ammo crate, the ammunition belt, and a tripod. So obviously you don't need the tripod. <clears throat> I picked one up yesterday in the box for twenty five bucks. So okay, uh, I gotta I gotta share something now. What do you got here? Thanks a lot, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered it. <laughs> There's one less now. Oh, you I, I, rec- I reckon if you if you look around, you'll you'll find more. Because um, I don't think everyone selling one of these would would put HM forces and things like that. So mm-hmm. um, they might not use the word jackal. It might be like toy army jeep or something like that. So it would take a little bit of, of looking around. So George Ga- George Gates uh, George Aitken is telling me to get the tank now. <laughs> oh, they got a tank. <laughs> Hold on, you guys handle things. I gotta. Uh... <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, this one says it was just missing the front gun, but sounds like it's too big anyway. So I'm okay yeah, with yeah, that. It's too big anyway. The front gun's way too big. Um, you don't need either of the guns because you'll need to change them out. They're they're way way too overscaled. Yeah. Sorry. Real quick. Hey, right. Sure. I'm go sorry, ahead. Real quick. Um, can you share the screen real quick? Because I, I, yeah, I'm curious if this is what Tony's looking for. Oh, fifty cal machine gun. Possibly. Who makes that? Uh, this is I. This is one I can print up. <laughs> oh, that's a digital ah. file. Yeah. So yes. this is like I guess this is a picture they're referencing it from, and then this is what it looks like put together. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's a exactly. 112 scale, huh? 
Uh, I can I can make it any scale you you like. Oh, true, Rosa. true. Yeah. Oh, they're saying this is a one to one scale, full size. <laughs> but I can I can always make it smaller. So that's no problem. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be funny if you printed it one to one scale. And now oh, that's what I want—the one to one scale. For yeah. <laughs> I don't have a big enough printer to do all that now. So. <laughs> Not yet. Right. We're getting close. Not yet. <laughs> okay, so should we uh, maybe open one of those packages? Well, well, Tony, it's it's all in one package. So gotcha. Um, okay. Because what they do, so I've got a US forwarding address. Um, that's that's how I've been able to order all my Valiverse product from Valiverse. Um, a lot of people have saying, how, how are you, you know, Bobby's playing favorites. He's shipping it to Australia for $8. I'm like, no, he's shipping it to my locker in Delaware. And then I pay, you know, I've got lots of different options when, whenever I get around, well, you know, whenever I get series two arrives, I'll be paying the most expensive one, which is probably going to be close to 200 bucks um, to get it here in about three days. Um, but this through DHL, I can get it here in about 10 days. Um, and what they do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to kill me when that thing shows up. <laughs> and what they do with this forwarding address, um, I can just keep having parcels keep arriving all the time. Um, they'll hold them for up to six months and then I'll just, say right ship all this together and when they ship it together they actually un if there's more than one parcel there they unpack them and put them all into one box um to save you on the shipping um so hmm. no it's not there so um so when people saw like dante jump on the 3poa the other week with the playmobil 18 van if it's not in here, I'm going to cry because it should be in here. <laughs> I was, so the funny thing was, like, when you when Ryan gave me the dress in Delaware, I was like, oh, shoot. I was like, I, I, hold on. I was like, maybe I should just drive this over to them <laughs> and see what they say. But, yeah. Are you, uh, you live near there, do you? What's that? Do you live near there? Oh, it's like, it's probably like a good 20 minutes away from me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, was like, I was like, I should have just drove this over there and just dropped it off and, like, here you go, guys. Uh, yeah, All right. Take care of it. <laughs> While you're cutting that open, let me get to another super chat from Jim Largo. Thank you. He says, if you're looking for something to enhance your swarm forces, check out the Beast Box Gunpowder. It's a robotic wasp that makes a great drone. It does look cool, and it looks like it fits. I, I follow Jim on uh, Instagram, and it like it looks like a wasp like drone. Like I think it's a transformer. Um, okay. but in, in, in wasp mode, it looks, it looks great. Thanks, I Jim. Seen that. I have to check that out. Beast box gunpowder. Okay. Mm hmm. Hmm. Evander from Paris is asking me, Tony, how many of the action man tanks do you have? I saw one in the box last summer. And in... so they only made one tank for action man. Um, it comes in many different boxes cause it was sold for many years. Um, so I've just got one of the scorpion tanks, um, Action Man. They did a armored personnel carrier, the Spartan, which is similar, um, but is much, much harder to find. And it's been a one of my holy grail action man items for a long time. I've been caught. <laughs> <laughs> this is my this is my son's uh YouTube channel. Is that oh, lazy kid? That, boy? <laughs> they, yeah, they're watching upstairs. I'm in trouble. <laughs> you see this? Oh, wait till he gets off that show. He'll be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, he's grounded. He's definitely grounded. <laughs> you, Why no, he grounded he's not. You point. can't ground him for that, Ryan. I'm not having <laughs> yeah. it. You're so lucky, Gavin. Uh... You are not grounded. <laughs> Fine. I'm going to watch my language now. I know he's watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> I need to remember that we're not past that watershed where we norm you know, normally get 8 o'clock at night on these yeah. <laughs> shows. Um, the other thing about is if, if, if any of my kind of friends or, or patrons want to know more about the US forwarding address that, that I use, um, flick me a message on Patreon or, or Facebook and I'll, I'll tell you. I, I've, this is, I think, the third or fourth um, parcel I've had from them. Excellent service, really, really well packed. Um, the website's simple to use. Uh, it's really good. That's true, Andrew. I think you're right. <laughs> 
<laughs> he says my wife watches the stream to monitor my purchases. <laughs> see, would you, see, you get monitored on Sat on Saturdays. I get monitored on Fridays. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because every time I go, I say, so what's this about this toy now that you're going to get? I, I, look, I, I got to go play some games. I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> I think that was a show first, though. That's the first time anyone on the 3POA has made an eBay purchase mid-show. I Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Wow. Where, what are you going to start with? Yeah. Ah, this I was expecting because I'd asked you to get yeah. me this guy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and I was happy to do it. Thank you very much, Ryan. This um, is yeah. the 50th anniversary Greedo. Oh, wow. Because I like me some bounty hunters, not just from Empire. So mm -hmm. have you got this yeah, figure? Yeah, um, they actually added a, a bit more of a wash to him than uh, than the first release, which is uh, yeah makes him a little nicer. Yeah, yeah I've already got like mine that. opened and in, in the display. Very nice. I gotta, I gotta check out my old Greedo and see what he looks like. And that so those three that they released on that card, they did him, mm -hmm. Luke, and Han. Those are still readily available. Oh, nice. Like they weren't like big sellers. I think they're still all on Pulse. In the yeah. US. Um, oh, Keith Knight, correct. Yes, they did make the Iron Knight tank for Action Man. It's a really poor tank, poor quality, undersized. I did own it at one point. Um, and when I was downsizing my vehicles, when I moved to Port Hedland, I, uh, I sold it to someone. You know what? When I was looking for stuff to send you, I actually searched Palatoy Action Man on eBay. That, really? that didn't last long. Man, those prices are <laughs> crazy, man. I'm like, yeah. wow. Yeah. All I right. I do that. I finally have myself some free POA stickers. And who's this guy? Uh, it's some <laughs> loser. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> look, I have a lot of those. So I wanted Ooh. to get rid of some. Just look at. My cousin, who was at Joe Fest last year, he works at a print shop, and he made me like three rolls of these, and he sent them <laughs> to me. So I have a lot. <laughs> and you, and you and you can't give them away. You see, you sent them to Australia, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's how you tip. That's how you start taping up all the boxes, just with the stickers. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been throwing them on the outside. So the box that you didn't get had stickers on the outside. Right. Before they right. repacked it, yeah. <laughs> They're probably like, who is it? You know what? Just go ahead and throw this box out. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with this? <laughs> oh, man, this is cool. A free yeah. POA t-shirt. Yep. So um, I actually made those. I didn't make the actual shirts. The shirts you can buy uh, just blank, but um, I got some heat transfer paper, and I, print, I shrunk the logo and printed them out. And then cut yep. them out, and you just iron them right on. <gasps> no way! That's a good idea. I might have tried that. Analog toys. Yeah, <laughs> I got uh, analog toys uh, one there. That's awesome. An action force T-shirt. <laughs> yep, and an action it. force. <laughs> I now, hopefully you have, I, I'm sure you have figures that those will fit on. They're kind of an elastic material, so they stretch real nice and they'll go, yeah. They'll, yeah. they'll fit on most, you know, six inch scale, normal size body figures. I need three more desert rats, so they're just going to go on desert rat. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, that looks. That, I'm yeah, gonna... I know what it looks like. <laughs> You're going to open another box and you'll see what that's for. That That is a separate neck piece for a six-inch figure. Oh, it's a neck piece. Mm -hmm. That's a neck. I thought it was a skin-colored <laughs> heat gun. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like. That's a ball joint at the top. So, <laughs> <laughs> Not a helmet. Oh, dude. <laughs> 
like mini He-Man and mini G.I. Joes. Yep. I figured uh, I, I figured Desert Rat would be a toy collector in the Action Force world. So he's got Absolutely. some carded Rock- uh, Motu figures. Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Yep. Nice, man. Nice. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. People are asking me to make your screen bigger. And I should have done that. Ah. Let's see here. Which button is it? This this one? This one? Not that one. There we go. That's it. That's it. I'll um I'll show the t shirts again because they're super cool. Ooh. Yeah, you got the oh, analog nice. toys and the three POA. And the uh, those Mini are He Man and, and G.I. Joe. Miniature Carter figures. Those are from um it's called Mini Toy Brands. And they're in one of the, the pink aisles, what I call the pink aisles at Target. If anyone wants to get those. They they come in blind boxes, so I bought a few of them. And I actually got the ones that I wanted to get. I got lucky. But they come packed with like um four or five different miniature toys. Yep. Nice. What's, what's Scuba Pete saying? Mini, mini Valiverse thongs. <laughs> <laughs> he also said, I thought Tony's t-shirt size was a medium husky. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm an XL. Because <laughs> I've got broad shoulders. <laughs> when, 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 he, when he says Valiverse thongs, I was like, yeah, d- Desert Rat need a pair of sandals. That's what we call thongs over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Knight of Ren. Those aren't world's smallest. I know the ones you're talking about, the mini figures um, called world's smallest. The ones that I sent Tony are actually smaller. They're more in scale with six-inch action figures. Oh, wow. They're, it's uh, mini, mini toy brands. Well, I put a lot of bubble wrap on that. Yeah, y'all oh. gonna say that's a long... <laughs> Oh, well, I remember what that one was now. I forgot what I put in the box. <laughs> ah. Captain, Captain Britain. Britain. Now this Captain Britain doesn't need that much protection, Ryan. Well, <laughs> look, I didn't want the paint to get scratched somehow, so. Yeah. Yeah, it, he, I think he did because, like, that Captain Britain... The beard looks like it was glued on. I can't remember if it's the beard face that looks like it was glued on or the like the regular face looks like it was glued on. Well, he has a um, lot of paint apps on him too. And so yeah. there's a lot of opportunity for paint scratch. So that's why I yes. wrapped him up like that. Yeah, yeah. And now, I've seen some really of the boxes that you've gotten, and you've gotten a few boxes in the mail that were smashed. So yeah. This is a really nice figure. Yeah, yeah. Big improvement on the first. For sure. I still like the head sculpt on the first one. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think on this one, the, it, the head sculpt wasn't really like you could see like where it's like glue, like a piece is glued on to the face. Mm. Yeah, on the, the other one, one, the go the goatee yeah. is a separate piece that's yeah. glued on. It's not a full sculpt. To me, Captain Britain doesn't have a beard. Like that's I think yeah. a, a more modern take. Yeah, it is. Like, yeah. Yeah. No beard and no eyes. <laughs> yeah. So he came in a three pack with Shadow Cat and um, what was the other one, Dante? Um, uh, Megan. Megan. And um, I knew that Michael actually wanted Shadow Cat, and Tony told me that he wanted Captain Britain. So I just I got a three pack and I sent him each one, and I still have the Megan. <laughs> <laughs> And he is that Dante? Is that supposed to be Excalibur that he comes with? Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Cool. And it's it's a really nice accessory. The detail in the in the in the hilt and down the sword blade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, that Megan's always hard to stand up. Her hair just pulls her down. It's a it's a big issue with Marvel Legends. Might be making a video about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and 
and GOJ classifieds and mm-hmm. yeah. sometimes you just gotta let your hair down. That is the packing. All right. Oh, look at that. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I almost kept it. <laughs> you almost kept it? I was like, yo, this looks like something I'll be sitting here playing with on the floor. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, if if Playmobil was a six inch figure line, I would yeah. I would have bought one of those. Right. I was like, yo, I was like all the details. Like, and I'll be like, I pity the fool. I'll be sitting there playing big brackets. I pity the fool. Who gonna try to put me on plane? I'm not going no plane, Hannibal. Wow, the side door opens. Yeah, yo, yep. that that van's awesome. I was like, man, whoa. Michael that- opened his on a um on one of his Patreon live streams recently, and I was blown away by it. Yes, I, I was. I was watching that stream, but I was listening in from from work, mm-hmm. so I was had the AirPods in. I was listening more than I was watching. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I might. I might yeah. bite, beat Michael to the punch and get my video about this out. Because so <laughs> 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 I, 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 got... I really want to compare this to the to the Galoob toy, and mm-hmm. is it? Is it two tone? That's yes. So the original A team van was black along the bottom, the red stripe, and then a dark grey above. Mm-hmm. The old glue toy was just all black plastic with a red stripe. Um, yeah. So this is correct to the actual TV version where it's black and, and grey, not all black. So man, no, this thing looks cool. I still can't remember what video you said that you were like, yeah, I can't wait. To, yeah, I wish I could get that that 18 uh, play, play on the toy. I, I still can't find a video that you said on from last year. I know it was like early I, last year, but I cannot remember which video it was. I, I, I can't remember either, but I've, I've def, <laughs> I definitely said that. Now, and now I have this. I'm pretty sure I need to go and get the um, the Knight Rider to go with it. <laughs> They're doing Knight Rider too. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Knight Rider, Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, so, I got, Jamie Bond, Aston Martin. Wow. I, I got my kid the DeLorean, and that is an amazing toy. Yeah. With the light-up features and mm-hmm. the level of detail in, in what is supposed to be a simple children's toy. It's a it's hands down one of the best toy DeLoreans. George yeah. Aiken, Playmobil 18 vans just, <laughs> just went up. <laughs> What's funny is you can get, I didn't know that the new Toys R Us that they opened up in New Jersey had these on on, on their shelves already. Mm. Yep. Wow. Yeah, Thank you I very mean... much, guys. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this, and I will be making a video dedicated to the two of you. Hey, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, you're very welcome. Which um, it's, it's 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 kind of lucky that Bobby isn't here today because I'll be like dedicating a video to you two, but not to you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby's so, had enough videos from me, man. <laughs> just so It'll everyone be- knows, I have not like when I first saw that Playmobil um, DeLorean, mm-hmm. it was just on the shelf at Walmart, and I've seen it many, 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 many times. So they the good thing about Playmobil is that they send enough stock out to retail. And they're not hard to obtain. Yeah. I don't even know if we get Playmobil in Australia or not. I don't know. Oh. Obviously, I, there's nowhere for me to go toy shopping where I live. It's, right. You know, whenever I go to Perth, I, I go hunting around. But to, I've never really looked for it. Like, I I don't go in the Lego aisle of stores. I just go to the action figure aisle normally. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, Murdoch's got a sock puppet. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, look, I was like, guys, look. It was funny because like how it came. I was like, we were at Joe Fest. We were sitting there, to, we were getting drunk most of like most of it the first night there. <laughs> Ryan had arrived late. He was like, yo, I was fighting at the airport. I got to like fight at the car rental place. Ryan had just finally showed up. Yeah. I was like, look. I was like, Tony said he wanted this Playmobil 18s, man. I was like, what if we go in on it and get it? I was like, I already pre-ordered it. <laughs> I was like, what are we just going <laughs> to make it? <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I'm cool. really yeah. looking forward to this year. Dante, you got to come down? 
I want to try. Okay. I'm definitely going to try. Yep. Um, so this one will make that neck peg more understandable. Ooh. But I believe this yeah. is the first figure from this line. that, And I won't say it yet. I'll let you open it. But anyone that knows already knows what it is. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. I'm, it's getting me a little bit nervous because I can already tell from the box that this is something quality, you know? Absolutely. One of my favorite lines to collect. What's that, Mezco? <laughs> Just open it up. Get that Mezco tissue paper off. Is. You don't have to be delicate with that tissue paper. <laughs> but it was wrapped so neatly. The Black Skulls Brigade. Ooh. That's a Mezco 112 scale Black Skulls Brigade. So, yeah, just go ahead and open that thing. It's just a shoebox. Um, they've kind of, sometimes they'll put their, their toy, you know, their figures out in tins or like lunchbox style boxes. Lately, they've been doing a lot more just cardboard shoeboxes <laughs> like this. There's a ton in there, man. It comes packed with accessories. I almost don't want to open this. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it because I can't see the figure. I've got to open it. Wow. This is like quality packaging. Yes. Yeah. Holy doesn't crap, play. Man. So um, you're familiar with soft goods. You collect Action Man. Mm -hmm. This is a 112. Uh, you know, uh, figure line uh, specializes in very well tailored soft goods. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell on camera because it's all black, but it's basically um, black cargo pants. Um, kind of a, I guess, I think Bobby refers to it as a frog shirt, like his Action Force yeah. characters have it without the um, without the shoulder lining there, like like an Action Force figure has. Like that, Damn, but this is cool. So, I included the neck peg so that you could put on the flesh tone neck onto that figure uh -huh. with a with a desert rat head and have a stealth ops desert rat. Ah, I'll be doing that. Yeah, <laughs> you just have to add a little bit of heat to the neck to get it to pop out. The head pops right off. But the neck peg, so there's a peg, there's a ball peg at the yeah, bottom yeah. of the neck. So just a little a little heat there because it's a little more snug than the head. And that'll pop right off. And that neck peg is designed to fit that body. Holy and crap. That's, from, that's from Action Figure Customs in Canada. He's got a grease gun? Yep, grease gun. Well, the, the, the neck peg is from Action Figure Customs? Yes, the custom neck peg is, yes. It's a guy up in Canada that, that makes... So the the neck on that Black Skull's um, Death Brigade figure there, it's like it's like an insect neck because it was designed for their Gomez figure, which is a anthropomorphic cockroach. Yeah. Um, so it's it's got like you know it's bisected and it's it's very insect looking. So he made a regular human looking neck piece for it, so that you could swap heads and you know, have a regular looking human figure. Damn, how many pairs of hands they come with? A lot. I think yeah. 10. Yeah. Or actually uh, 11 12. pairs because he's he comes with the fists on, I think. Yep. He's got grenades, the grease gun. I believe he has a... Uh, a shoulder holster here. Mm -hmm. What do the pistol magazines come out? They do. And the pistol has the uh, the slide on top. You watch as Tony breaks this on camera. <laughs> <laughs> At least I think it does. Maybe that's the pistol they made without the sliding action. I don't think this one does. Okay, but I, the clip comes out for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and there's yeah, the spare clips here. But if you look here, so this figure has a similar size neck. Mm -hmm. 
right scale for an action force figure. So what what's your intent here, Ryan, to make me go broke? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want more Mezcos now? <laughs> it's a hole, it's a deep well, hole. <laughs> oh my god, he's got a claymore clacker. Yeah. Does he have a claymore? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, like I said, they pack them full. So people are usually turned off by the price on these. I think um, I think this one was $80, $80, which was like their base price. Yeah. But they come packed with so much, and their their soft goods are so well tailored. Mm -hmm. And and the, the articulation and, and the functionality of the figure itself is so high quality. To me, it's more than worth it for a Mexico. Oh, yeah. Now that they have some misses, of course, it, you know, no toy line is perfect, but um, the Mezco 112 line is like I said, it, it's one of my favorites to collect for a reason. And this, this is like the uh, the rocket launcher from Commando, yes, <laughs> yep. And um, wow. you'll see the rocket in there, there you go, with the smoke trail. How cool is that? <laughs> Dude, that that so no, it doesn't come with a claymore. So the claymore clacker is like the, the detonator, but it comes with like a, a package Plastic. of explosives. Yeah. I've I've been asking Bobby to make a claymore for I said Desert Rat version two. <clears throat> He'll probably never make a Desert Rat version two because I bug him about it so often. Um, but I'm like, it needs to have the Mag 58 machine gun and a claymore. And you need to make a claymore for this line. Don't yeah. need it now. I've got well, this. if he doesn't make Desert Rat version two, this could be possibly your Desert Rat version two. Possibly, possibly. Um, Brian Dillingham, thank you very much for uh, your super chat, as always. Yep. Um, Kieran Ball saying, Tony, check out the online store Bunyip Toys, Australia's home of Playmobil. Okay. Um, I'll go and have a look because I, I do want that Knight Rider. Because um, to me, it, it goes with this. It's like the two... I, imagine, I don't know if... They need to do Airwolf. Airwolf and Street Hawk, oh. and I would get all of them. The, the TV vehicles. Yeah. And if... Uh... Andrew Sabina has the right idea. Hmm? To administer that heat, you need the right heat gun. Right here, baby. <laughs> um, I need to use my label maker to label it. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've got my one six scale flesh toned heat gun right here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'm glad what you like that Mezco because I was a I was a little nervous. Maybe you wouldn't be into it, but then again, you love Action Man, which is a soft good action figure. This is just yeah, kind of yeah. like a six inch version of it. And it's somewhat militaristic, kind of like undercover spy look to him. So these are guys that are making Conan. Yeah. 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 Their, their, their Conan is excellent, man. Has he, has he come out yet? Yeah, I have him. Oh, okay. Dante's going to go get him. Thank you, Dante. And they have a second one up for, uh, I think the pre-order is ended, but. I believe it's open for wait list. Yeah. And it's probably early enough that, you know, if enough people join the wait list, they'll order extra. <laughs> Scoop. <Look>. Scoop <laughs> uh. Oh. He says, hey, Brian Dillingham, not banned on this channel. <laughs> if you're <laughs> a patron of Retro Blasting, you get that. And that's really funny. Oh, man. That, yeah. that that isn't the Conan I was thinking of though. I was thinking of like the movie accurate Conan. Oh uh, no. Who, who the makes Frank, that? Frizz, Frank Frazetta Conan? Yeah. They do ones from the comics that they uh they did. That's still a really, really cool figure. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the old so who, who's doing the, the movie accurate Conan then? Super seven, and it's not accurate at all. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Whoops. There we go. Subpar seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the Super 7 Arnold uh, Conan. Uh, it's horrible. It's uh, I mean, it looks like it's on their He-Man body. Yeah, okay. Yep. Speaking speaking of Conan, it's a shame it's a shame Bobby's not here. I <laughs> yeah. sat down and watched Conan the Destroyer the other day. Um I actually don't think I've I've watched Conan the Barbarian many times in my life. I don't think I've watched Conan the Destroyer since I was about nine years old. I sat down and rewatched I really, really enjoyed it. I'm not sure that it's better than dis than Barbarian. Um it's it's got a very different tone. It's the, the, there's a lot more action. Um, it's a good film. It's a good film. I, I need to think. I need to apologise to Bobby about Conan, my Conan the Destroyer comments. Um, <laughs> I, sh so I should watch it too because I've yeah. yeah. I should watch it too because I've actually never seen Destroyer. I've seen Barbarian when I was a kid. Yeah, uh, I I really need to revisit both of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, and well, I need to see Destroyer for the first time. I've never seen it. I enjoy both of them, I, and, and most people. I don't understand why, why Red Stallion gets a lot of hate. I enjoy Red Stallion as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I didn't know they you, made a Red Stallion movie. Yeah, yeah. So, so Schwarzenegger was in that, and it came out mm -hmm. around the same kind of time. But he isn't playing Conan; he's playing someone else. Mm -hmm. And Bridget Nielsen is Red Sonja. Um. Yeah. Wow. You can't go past Hawk the Slayer, though. If you ask me, that's that's the best one of those. Kind of fantasy films of the eighties is Hawk the Slayer. Surprise! Christoph Miller says that Kit is going to be ninety dollars. That's really Holy surprising. Shit. Yeah, I remember buying the DeLorean, and it was it was fifty. It might have been forty five, something like that. That sucks. Um, <laughs> I reckon it's got an electronic talking voice. Mm. That, that yeah, would probably by why the electronics have probably bumped up the price. But uh, yeah, um, I think about that. Are, they, are these fragile Mezcos? They're pretty resilient. I, I would just yeah. be careful with the um, soft goods. Make sure you don't pinch them in a joint when you're articulating, especially with the shirt. The the pants are more forgiving. Yeah. But you see that shirt is more of like a, like, like a spandex elastic stuck yeah. type material. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to that from almost 30 years of collecting action man stuff. Yeah. Um, see? There you go. Yeah, I'm I'm fascinated by this. <laughs> I was gonna. Sorry, was gonna Gracie. <laughs> She's gonna work soon. <laughs> you need to apologize to my patrons because I was gonna get this tipping the scales video finished today, and I'm gonna blame it on the Mezco when it doesn't come out today. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh. I wonder. This the stand looks pretty good too. Absolutely. Yeah, it comes with a, a with a articulated arm to put them in. Flight poses, if you want, you know, jumping poses, mm -hmm. but there's also a foot peg, so you can peg his foot onto it. Yep. And they work great. In fact, I have right here my, <laughs> I don't have Conan handy, but I do have the Conan stand. And so they're, they take up a lot of shelf real estate, you know, yeah. but I, Tony, with the way you display, I mean, I'm sure you have room for something like this. Yeah. Yeah. Size. What's this? Um, What's this tube of stuff at the bottom here? That is just a um, like a Ziploc bag you can store the accessories in. They're included with every figure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Man. You, you, you can see the, the quality dripping off this everywhere. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> Tony Robles, thank you very much for the super chat. He said, I missed the unboxing. Did Tony get a heat gun too? <laughs> yes. Yeah. A one six scale flesh colored heat gun. There you go. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to get myself a heat gun. I wonder, I wonder if they sell that same one here in Australia. I'll have to have a look. Um, I so I bought it on Amazon and they're like ten dollars, I think. Yeah, I, I've, yeah. I've had it for a few years. It might be a little bit more than that now, but it works great. <laughs> Look, I just got a uh, regular hair dryer over here. I ain't, I ain't fancy like everybody else. All right. Let's get, get this Vidal Sassoon because you know if, if you don't look good, you don't look good. 
<laughs> what kind so, of hair dryer is that? <laughs> look, it's, it's my wife's old hair dryer. And she's, it's like, she said, you can just use this. She's got another one. I was like, all right, cool. So I just, I use to heat up my fingers now. Some uh, <laughs> men in black stuff over here. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, it's a nebulizer. <laughs> Where are you, you tell me you've got to use the heat gun to get the neck post off? What about using the heat gun so close to the fabric? Be very careful. I've done it. it. You can do it without damaging the fabric. Just, you know, don't, I, I wouldn't hold it directly on. And I would just yeah. move it, you know, move the heat gun as, or hair dryer, however you use, just move it. And you don't need to get it really hot because it is a regular ball peg. It will pop off. Yep, yep. But um, on mine, when I've removed the neck, you could probably do it without heat, but I'm worried I'm going to break the plastic. So I always add just a little bit of heat. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the peg is in the neck, right? Yeah. So the peg stays in the body, and the neck has the peg hole in it. Yep. So, well, I'm trying to th trying to think what figure it was. The, the other day, I went to sw swap a head on a figure, and the, the neck the neck joint came out instead of the head popping off. You know, the neck joint came with it. Oh, I couldn't get the thing back on without I had to you know put it in some warm water and mm -hmm. to get it back on again. And that was that was I'm sure that, that might have been the 80th Thor actually. Uh oh, you know the one with the lifelike desert rat body. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally accurate. Yep. <laughs> the one that uh, Mr. Valla designed. Really cool. Yeah. Uh, Carlo Navarro, thank you very much for the super chat. No message, but we do appreciate it very much. Yeah, much appreciated. Wow. Thank well, you very I'm, much, Ryan and Dante. You're you more than welcome. I'm. I'm. I'm glad you're so excited about that Mezco. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like for 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 a while there in the like in in the two thousands, um, because I was so into into Action Man, there was a, a company called Dragon started making a lot of World War Two Action Man scaled, um, but they were much more kind of collectible, highly detailed World War Two soldiers. Um, I would almost say they were kind of like the precursor to this in the one six scale. Um, and I got really into those for, for, for quite some time. I really appreciate this highly detailed. Um, and, and it used to amaze me then how they could make the stuff so accurate in the one six scale. And now here I am 15 odd years later going, they're doing it in the um, one to 12 scale. So yeah. this is awesome. Trust me. I, I know the feeling because I, I, like I got Captain Nemo and that thing, was decked out. I'm like, yeah. this man comes with like a cape, a little hat. I'm like, oh, okay, well, here we go. Well, let's let's roll with it. I'm good at this. The vapor <laughs> as well. Comes with the uh, the hoodie, the backpack. The, uh, I forget what kind of coat it's, it's called with the cutoff sleeves. Uh, the vest coat. But <gasps> Timberlands just, and Jordans. Yep. The stock on the grease gun folds out. Yeah. No one. Totally. Crass. So I don't know if you can see it. Because it's kind of far away on camera, but that case right there, when my finger's touching, not really, but I have four of those in there with the white skull agent. And the only difference with him is that he has a white skull and um, I think he has shoulder holsters. I think the black skull came with shoulder holsters too. And he has a, a an overcoat, a long overcoat. Yep. And removable magazine. Yep. With the painted bullet. Yep. In the magazine. Wow. Yeah, they, they don't when it comes to those little details, uh, they don't they don't skimp on it. No. Yeah, like I'm <clears throat> I'm looking at the um the the pistol shoulder holster here. Okay, good. Like yeah, even, he does come with it. Yeah. Even just the texture on here. Mm -hmm. The stitching, it looks like real leather. Pistol mags in one side, pistol in the other. Mm -hmm. Now, careful because the pistol mags, the one thing about that, the pistol mags in there, they don't like 
they don't go in snugly. So if you put them in and you're moving them around, they will fall out and they, yep. <laughs> they're tiny. So that's one thing to, uh, to keep your eye on. Dude, I, I can remember when I was, so when I did the, the, the big video review of, um, um, of the Valiverse Action 4 Series 1, mm-hmm. that video I, I worked on for, for three odd weeks. Um, and the reason it took me three weeks is just because I spent about five days trying to find Sarge's sunglasses again. <laughs> so, so, you know, what I've I been in here. Find? Well, um, you glued them on. I, I got two Sarges, right? And so, uh, when the second Sarge was shown, you know, w- w- without the jacket, <clears throat> just with the tank top, I was like, well, I have two Sarges now. <clears throat> so, I took one of the heads. And I did glue the glasses on (laughs) just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit of super glue right above his ears. Just tucked them down, held it for a minute. And it's perfect because I I didn't want to lose them. I knew I would lose them. Exactly. I left mine in a box. I took them off, put them right back in the box. I was like, I'm not going to lose these. (laughs) Put in the box, put in a safe spot. So I know where it's at. Because like you, I did the same thing. I did get two Sarges as well. Yeah. Um. Tony Robles, thank you again for a super chat. He says, my favorite Mezco figure will always be the Judge Dread. they did. Absolutely worth it. That was yeah. one of their first 112 figures. Yep. Um, we that actually was... talked about... I'm sorry. Go ahead. I know I was saying, because we talked about this last night. I was talking about how, how my Judge Dread is starting to flake up. <laughs> like Because it was one of the early versions of like that, I guess was that, that Fox leather that they were putting on there. Yeah, sorry. it's like pleather. Yeah. yeah. So Alex, Alex being a hot toy collector, he said there's this mm-hmm. oil you can get for that for that faux leather that that pleather that you just oil it up once like once a year, just a little bit, rub it on, and it'll keep it from flaking. Yeah. But mm. that figure you got, Tony, doesn't have any of that faux leather. It's all like cloth. Yeah, I've 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 had experiences with that kind of stuff before with um um some of the reproduction action man stuff they did for the 40th anniversary. It was like a faux leather tanker jacket. Mm-hmm. And if you find those carded in the box today, like 15 years after they were made and it's all just falling apart, all the faux leather, I, I stay well clear of it now. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Tony. Um, they also, they even did the law master with judge dread. That thing was cool. Yeah. That was before I was collecting them though. So I, I don't have that one. Yeah. I, I should have got that one. That's the one I should have yeah. got. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think I got the dread. I got the Judge Dread before they announced the Lawmaster with them. And it, I think it was a, maybe it was a, like a couple months after that one had came out, the original Judge Dread. And then it was like the Judge Dread with the Lawmaster. And I was like, mm-hmm. I, can't afford, I can't afford that right now. Yeah, it was pretty pricey. I, it was two two hundred and fifty, <laughs> which it's, which I th- I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, it was it was very pricey. But um. Yeah. I think we can wrap it up. You've uh, opened everything, Tony. And Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Dante, thank you very much for joining us today thank for you, this you, uh, special episode of 3POA. And real quick, we just got another super chat from Mike LeMay. Thanks, Mike. Um, Mike may be <laughs> packing up some uh, Action Force orders at the Valiverse headquarters. Uh, he says, "True story. The real Sergeant Slaughter also glues his glasses on." <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Mike. Um, and then uh, Scuba Pete, thank you so much. He put a link to the Infinity Equation podcast in the chat. Um, it. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Scuba. And it's in it's in the description of the video as well. So, um, yeah, before before we sign off, Dante, tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, you can always find us every Friday on Infinity Equation and every other Sunday on Infinity Creators, uh, Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern. Actually, this Sunday, yeah, Infinity Creators is back, so we'll be back this Sunday as well. Okay. Cool. And you, uh, Dark Joker's in on Instagram and Twitter. Yep. All right. And, and then uh, Infinity Equation Facebook group, too. Shoot. I can always forget about that one. Yeah. The <laughs> Facebook group. Yeah, I, I have a hard time trying to keep up my own personal <laughs> social media. I'm like, I don't know what it is anymore. Yeah, I know the feeling, Dante. <laughs> it's like, 
Um, I'm LaserPants81 on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and Tony, your analog toy is like everywhere. Facebook, uh, yep. uh, except for Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I'm not on Twitter. I don't, I don't right. like that stuff a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, who needs it? <laughs> but yeah, the, um, the three POA regular programming returns next week. And we have a special guest, don't we, Ryan? Yes, we have Jeff Hicks from World Class Bullshitters. He's going to be joining us. And uh, we're going to be talking about some of these new toy reveals, these modern toy reveals that we're getting kind of all month long since there isn't a toy fair. Yeah. So um, there will be a lot to talk about. Jeff is a big-time toy collector, um, really smart guy, and I'm really looking forward to talking with him. It's going to be a great show. Yeah, awesome. And, um, yeah, there's uh, Hasbro are doing a big live stream on Monday, aren't they? Which yeah, Yes, which they're doing – uh, it's the Marvel Legends team doing a live stream. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah there'll be right. plenty to plenty to talk about. Oh, Jeff. before we go, before we go, I want to talk about crap chrysanthemum real quick. Sure. I know you yeah. guys talked about it last night on Infinity Equation. But so the Star Wars Black series is bringing out Black Chrysanthemum. Not based on the Book of Boba Fett, because that, that would be really clever of Hasbro since the Book of Boba Fett TV shows come out. And as much as everyone knows I don't like that show, I think the uh, character design um, of the live action Chrysanthemum looked really, really good. And then we get, are you trying to pull it up for me, Ryan? Yep, I'm getting it. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll here we go. So, I don't know why when Disney Plus is going to give us the first ever live action version of this character, they choose to do the comic version. But I have a theory that um, Kathleen Kennedy actually designed this figure. <laughs> what she did, she was going into a pitch meeting for a for a new Disney Plus show called Watto's Junkyard with you know, Watto from Tatooine. So she's going into this pitch meeting and um, and one of the Hasbro execs is there and he gives Kathleen just this massive chunk of licorice. And she goes into the pitch meeting and she chews on it for the next hour and then comes back out and go, there you go. There's your next action figure. There you A go. lump of chewed licorice. <laughs> well, I mean, geez, if you look at this thing, it so... The big excuse I hear is, "Oh, this is the comic book version." The comic it book version. Like the comic book version. Exactly. The comic book version looks just like he does on the show. He's yeah. big. He's hulking. He has some white streaks in his fur. The harness actually fits and doesn't look like he's wearing his dad's harness. You know, he's not. Yeah. He's not thin and lanky like Chewbacca is because this is just. Chewbacca dipped in black paint. That's all this is. I mean, exactly. a slightly kind of a new head, but not accurate to comic or TV show. This is just the laziest you know when we thing. Have the, you know when we have these really, really tragic, like big oil spills in the oceans, mm -hmm. and you see, you know, all the seagulls and stuff um, yes. covered in all the oil? This is what happened in, you know, on Kashyyyk when the Empire had a big oil spill when Chuck Chewie was going for a swim. Um, yeah. This is the yeah. Exxon Valdez um, Chewbacca. That's what this is. <laughs> yeah, the Exxon Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it, but, yeah, this has got to be probably the laziest thing I've seen the Black Series team do. And not to say that everything they put out is crap, but Man, when they put out crap, it is crap. And Dante dropped out. Not sure why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe he lost his internet connection. But um, he, he frozen for a little bit there, perhaps. Uh, okay. Yeah, he might have lost uh, connection. But yeah. So and and also that they consider this a uh, like a premium release, so it's priced at twenty eight dollars instead of the uh, retail price of twenty. Yeah. So the normal retail price of Black Series now is 25 right? Because all of Hasbro's six-inch figures, 
you know, the inflation, what, whatever, whatever reason you want to assign to that, they're all 25 now. Um, but this one is 28. Welcome back, Dante. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Uh, it, he also comes with a bowcaster, which apparently he did have in the comic, but he did not have in Book of Boba Fett. He did not have a bowcaster like Chewbacca. Well, the, the, I think this is possibly one of the reasons why they didn't do the live action version because it's lazy, they, less tooling. Hey, we can do this figure real cheap. Mm -hmm. um, does he even have his, his knuckle dusters? No, he has Chewbacca's hands, no knuckle dusters. Yeah. So real quick, uh, yeah. this is what Lance, this is what somebody did on Instagram, Lance Peter Luke. I don't know if anybody's seen that. I have it up. Sure. There we go. That's Black Crescenti. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, look at the harness. Nice wash yep. to it. It fits him. He's hulking. You know, he's big. He's thick, rotund. Um, his braids are actually correct. I think it, it looks like he has some white highlights there. But um, I think he, yeah, he did say he put uh white uh some highlights in there, uh no gray. I'm sorry, it was gray. He said painted with gray. black Vallejo paint and dry brush with light, lighted grays. Okay, and he sculpted it on a, yeah. So he added a ton of sculpt to a Chewbacca body. Yeah. What does Michael French say? Uh, the fans are doing it better. The fans are doing the best work. Yep. Best work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's great, man. Good on Lance oh, Peter man. Luke. I follow him. That's a great um, Instagram account to follow. Yeah. Awesome. That's all they need to do. This is all they need to do. That looks really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't look like yeah. this chewy cosplay as Black Santa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Black or Santa's little brother. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think we could put a pin in it there until next week. Absolutely. Yeah. I need to get a cup of tea and some breakfast. All right. Need to, need, to, need to put some, uh, need to fuel up the love machine so I can play with my most couple morning. <laughs> yeah, early Sunday morning. Tony coming to us from the future. Yeah. All well, right, actually, everyone. The, the UFC's on. I'm going to watch the UFC and just play with my mezco. Thank All you right. so much, Dante, for, for coming on the show. It's, right. it's a pleasure to have you on. Again, thank you guys for inviting me. I had, I had fun. It was a good time, as always. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. And um, we'll see you next week. Later, yep. everyone. See you next week. See you.